the intention behind the proposal, I suppose, was to, uh, to get people excited about the idea, to get people working on it, uh, or to give me some space to work on it. Um, that I had this idea, I talked about a lot, and so, but there was nowhere really at CERN to take an, uh, an idea. There was nowhere to take a, pro uh, a proposal for software. There were lots of places you could go to if you had a proposal for a physics experiment. So, uh, but somebody said, well, why don't you write a memo? So I wrote a memo, and, and so I, you know, which said this will be a good idea and sent it to some people I knew, but there wasn't really any process that I, that I could really put it into. Uh, so really it was just to raise awareness, to get people talking. Well, it was never formally given the nod to go ahead. So, uh, in fact, I wrote it originally 20 years ago now, back in March 1989, nothing happened at all. In fact, I met various people uh, and, when I, and I was talking uh, I don't know, in the evening over drinks or something about, uh, about this hypertext and they said, well, what happened? You know, uh, why didn't you write a memo about it? And I said, you know, I did. So somebody said, well, why didn't you send it around again? Maybe David Williams, I think, said, so, and sent it to me. So I sent it around again and again nothing happened. But then in September of 1990, then what Mike Sendel said was, he, this next machine was a very fancy new thing, and I, he gave me permission to work on it. So, it took, so we bought two of them, and he said, well, what, the reason we bought them was to test them out, to see whether they were good development machines. So he said, you'll need some sort of project to work on just to test the machine. So the goal of the whole exercise was to test out this machine to see how it worked, and he said, why don't you work on something like, say, that, that hypertext thing you were talking about? So it was very sort of unofficial. I don't think so, no. I think CERN's an excellent place for it. Maybe perhaps could have been the only place where it could have been. CERN is a way a microcosm of the rest of the world because it has lots and lots of people coming from all over the place. Uh, and you know, some people, some places people come from all over the world, but they're very organized and they have, they're told what computers to use and which programs to use. So and they come from all over and well in those days at any rate, they were, they brought all kinds of different computer. They had all kinds of different documentation systems and, and formats for their documents. So there was this huge heterogeneity for one. So there was a real need to do the integration of the system. Uh, also, of course, physicists are early adopters. They had workstations, uh, nice machines on their desks when most people across the world didn't yet. So it was, if you like, an advance of the, of the world. And also they were networked because the high energy physics community is so global. Already they were networked. So this was, if you like, if, you, if the World Wide Web was a mold, it was a great Petri dish to get it growing in, just the right combination of, of nutrients. Well, it was initially, it was very, very much designed to be, uh, well, to be global, hence the name, and to be applied to anything. That was, I noticed that systems which failed, often failed because they were restricted to one particular sort of way of thinking or one particular sort of document, or it was designed for one particular application. The whole point about a link is it has to be able to go anywhere. So the idea was that you should be able to have information about an experiment, which links to some information about a piece of equipment, and that should be able to link to the information about the pieces, you know, the, the internal information about the equipment from the equipment manufacturer. So you can't draw a line and say this is an academic system, because the academic system connects with the commercial world, and all the world, in fact, connects in different ways. So a very early um, important point of the web is there's no, there's no line where you say, you know, these things belong on the web and these things don't. So the universality of it was, from the word go, really, really important. Of course, it wasn't evident how, uh, how universal it would become in its adoption. I don't think uh, it, we really didn't have time to be surprised. There was originally the load, the number of hits on this machine, it started off as 100 a day. Then a year later, it was 1,000 a day. And then a year later, it was 10,000 a day. And so, uh, so and in fact, it was a very steady growth. And that's just the, no, that's just the hits on this, on this machine as a, as a server. When 
and, and the machine that replaced it as the, as the load got higher. And so just it was like a continual Big Bang sort of thing. It was just happening a factor of 10 every year for this server, but then meanwhile server, there were more and more people getting clients, more and more people making servers. So no, it wasn't, it wasn't that it, uh, it wasn't really a surprise also because I was always worried that it was going to stop. I was worried that it would do this for some reason. I think it, there was the, the fact that CERN put the web into the public domain, the fact that they said, when you use this technology, you won't have to pay us royalties, was absolutely critical. Uh, one technology which did do that was the Gopher. It was going up a very web-like system, and it was taking off, and then the University of Minnesota, which owned it, said, we might possibly charge fees for it. They might have to charge us royalties. Everybody dropped. And then the World Wide Web was doing this and went on. But when that happened, people came to me urgently and said, look, you really have to, uh, you have to tell us what the, what the deal is with the World Wide Web. What about, what about the royalties? I said, well, I have asked CERN to release it. Uh, I'd asked them a long time ago, but we haven't got anything out of them. And uh, Robert Cayo spent a long time badgering the directorate, and eventually he got the signed, stamped CERN official saying, we will not be charging royalties. That was an essential key point, and otherwise the web would not have taken off. It would have splintered into many, many proprietary incompatible webs. <laughs>